All right, boys and girls, thanks for joining me. Today we're checking out another awesome AEA precision air gun from the pellet shop. It's a given on air gun channel. We already know that the bolt action AEAs are super accurate. And this is the standard ones, not even regulated. But the gun we're looking at today is called the HP series standard customized edition air rifle. It's affordably priced and it's regulated. So you're going to have a gauge for your tank pressure and a separate gauge for your regulator pressure. It's got a nice manual. Shows some different models. It's got an exploded view and parts list. Some specifications. More specifications. Some stuff on air tube filling. Gun chassis air filling, whatever that is. And a lot of do's and don'ts in this manual. So you definitely want to read it to figure out what not to do. I'll go over everything that's important. It just has a standard AR style stock, so you can use any AR stock on here. Just screw it on. You should have a spanner wrench to tighten it, but uh, you can use a screwdriver. Just tap those little notches right there. It's available in 22 and 25 caliber. These guns have adjustable power, so we're gonna test the out of the box tune. And if we need to or want to, we'll just bump the power up and down and tune it for different pellets. So that's what it means is you can tune for any ammo basically. You can shoot 18 grains or if you want to blast your 33 grain, go ahead. Uh, every time I check the pellet shop, I'm surprised. Okay, so first I need to mention though with your HP Series Standard Customized Edition Air Rifle, for just $99, you can get a Donny FL and the adapter. So that's a $150 value at the least. So I actually have an adapter, but it only adapts my... 357 actually my 457 emperor so i figured i would just shoot this with the stock baffle system which we'll get a look at so this has its own sound suppression system let's see if there's any more hardcore stats here the magazine is going to hold 12 shots in 22 caliber 10 shots in 25 caliber the muzzle velocity with 14.3 grain 22s is 1300 feet per second so obviously you're going to be shooting heavy ammo with the 22 or turning it down for more shots 25 caliber, we're looking at 1,000 feet per second with 24 grain. I assume that means 25 grain. So yeah, if our 25 grain shoots around 950, that'd be cool. Well, we'll see. We're going to find all that out in just a second. So in the 22 caliber, and once again, you guys, this is regulated. And what that means is you're going to get the same velocity every shot, whether your tank is empty or full. So it's very important to have a regulator on your PCP air gun. 22 caliber, we're looking at 45 foot-pounds. And in the 25 caliber, you're looking at 70 foot-pounds, or 90 joules. It weighs just 5.7 pounds, 24 inches long when it's folded, with an overall length of 45 inches. You got a collapsible stock, so it's adjustable, I guess you would say, and then it also folds. So it's a great truck gun. It's a bolt action. The air tube capacity is 350 cc's. You want to run this gun on 300 bar or 3600 psi has 11 millimeter dovetail scope rail as i said integrated shroud and sound moderating system and the last thing it says here is that it's regulated so as i was saying the bolt action aeas are so accurate a regulated version is going to be awesome so here we go the gauge underneath the gun is going to be your regulator pressure and the gauge in the front of the gun going to be your air pressure in the tank just remove that cover in the front and that'll give you access to your fill port it does come with a fill probe already machined, ready to go. Of course, you always want to clean your new air gun with a crown saver and ballast all. So the shroud is just hand tightened on there. And inside the shroud, here's a look at your sound moderation system. It's basically a series of baffles. So those are going to fit in there just like that. Kind of a conical shape and that strips the airway and the sound. Looks like you're going to have seven sections. And it should be pretty effective at reducing the noise on this bad boy. That's the perfect shape for silencer baffles. And the very end of the barrel's got this sort of rubber baby buggy bumper on it. Definitely cool though. So I turned the gun upside down so I didn't get solvent in the transfer port. Gonna go ahead and get all the preservative gunk out of the barrel before I shoot it. That'll give us the best accuracy and if you don't clean that stuff out, it can actually damage your barrel. There's the junk I got out. And I could have got this thing a little cleaner. And although I didn't get it totally clean, it's definitely a big improvement. There's this sort of squiggly washer thing. And that's actually just to add a little springiness 
that's just going to drop right over your last baffle. And then that black aluminum piece will go on top of that. When you're done cleaning your gun, just drop the baffles in one at a time. Drop in that washer. And last, you're going to drop in that black piece. And you'll be all set. So I'm actually going to show you how to adjust the regulator in this video. So the regulator is supposed to be set at 140 or 150 bar. But first, here's a look at the power wheel. So the straight up and down position is on maximum. If you turn it to the left or turn it to the right, it's the same. I guess it would turn 45 degrees to the right and 45 degrees to the left. That's the same setting. But I'm just going to leave it on maximum for this entire video. So on maximum with the gun regulated at 150, here's some pellet speeds. All right, we got basically the 33 grain JSB and the 25 grain JSB. We go over here, we got MK1s, MK2s, so those are 33.95 grain, 34 grain FX pellets. Then over here in the lightweight section, we got the 25.39 grain JSBs, 25.4 grain FX, 26.54 grain Hades, and Atomic, which are basically Hades, but they're 26.6 grains. The 34 grain JSB, we're shooting 825 feet per second. That's our heaviest pellet. The FX equivalent is shooting a very special 835 feet per second. If you wanted to raise that up, just turn up your regulator. The new atomic pellet at 26.6 grains, shooting a very special 910 feet per second. 26.54 grain Hades, almost identical at 909 feet per second. And now I think the preferred pellet weight, at least at the factory tune, 25.4 grain. And these pellets right here shot perfect. At 914 feet per second, the 25.39 grain JSBs shot perfectly. At this point in the video, I haven't tested all the pellets yet for accuracy. 35 yards away, nailed it. But here's a sample of the accuracy with the 25.39 grain JSB reds. It almost looks like we shot a... Focus, my It almost looks like we shot a smiley face in this guy. Like I gave him kind of a panda bear face. Anyway, let's finish him off. <laughs> so I sat it down on this guy's face. Let me just warm up. Freaking direct hit, hit it again. <laughs> Look at that bullseye, you guys, wow. Go for Mr. Squirrel. Wow, I got nervous on that last one, but that could have been five through the same hole. That was awesome. That was five shots right there. Let's try it again. It looked like one hole through the scope, but this group will still fit under a dime, and it's just the first group I shot when I sighted in. Here's the second group. <laughs> pretty freaking awesome if you ask me oh my gosh five shots that's a dime size bullseye right there so we got five shots in half of a dime pretty awesome on the first try too we're gonna do some more shooting in a little bit here but first i'd like to tell you how to adjust the regulator the screw got backed out on this one so we're going to take it from 250 and we want it to be between 140 and 150 for the factory tune so I'm going to barely unscrew this just gently until the air starts to hiss out. Then I'm going to let all the air hiss out. And then after it's out, I'm going to take one shot just to make sure. All right, both my gauges are at zero. So I'm going to pull the trigger once just to make sure. 
looking so good. Yeah, I didn't have to loosen anything. I just unscrew this right here by hand. It's not under pressure. So inside here somewhere is a regulator. I'm gonna go ahead and put like a screwdriver through this hole and unscrew this part. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to do this in a clean environment. There's like oil and stuff on here that's gonna attract dirt and dust. You wanna keep this all real clean. So inside here is your regulator and we're gonna push that out. Inside one end is gonna be just like I'd say two inches in, and then the other end is hollow all the way down there. So on minus the end with the writing, I'm going to push my regulator out that way. One thing that will work well to push this out is your shroud. So I'm going to take the other end, this one right here, all right you guys that literally popped out with little force, I could have done it with one finger. so. This right here is your AEA regulator, and this right here is your regulator adjustment. I'm not sure what that white mark is for, probably from the factory they were marking it. Anyway, all we want to do is we want to turn this in so it's flush, and then we're going to turn it from being flush, we're going to turn it exactly one turn in, and that will get us to 150 bar. Alright, so you can see right there, I'm about just about flush with the top, so I'm going to give it exactly one turn in. When you put everything together, just remember to have your regulator pointing in the right direction. You're going to want it at the end of the air tube closest to the trigger with that brass adjustment piece facing forward. And you can just screw everything together, hand tighten only, and you'll be ready to go. On the first try, I got to right about 135 maybe. And I did the whole process again, bumped it like one eighth of a turn out, and I was exactly at 150. After you snug your front air gauge up with your fingers, you just barely want to tighten it with a wrench. If it's too tight, then it won't read correctly. But yeah, you just barely have to tighten that and it'll hold just fine. So that worked out good and as you can see, it's shooting lights out. So I'm definitely loving this regulated AEA. I believe 920 feet per second is what the 25.39 grain redesigns like to fly at. And shooting a pellet that heavy, that fast, gives you some extreme power. Now combine that with shot placement, and here's a little demonstration of the 25 caliber hitting some targets. I can't see the center of my crosshairs, but I can see like the outside, so I'm lining everything up. This next one right here, I definitely hit it, but it must have had too much glue on it because I tipped the ram over. Dang, some heavy targets just really smacks them down. <laughs> Sweet. And don't worry, I won't leave without showing you some 50 yard accuracy testing. I was in a hurry, but I sat down and shot a couple groups at 50 yards with a 25.39 grain JSB. Here they are. All right, that's more like it. I had to defog my scope cam. Let's see what we're gonna hit. I can't see nothing. It's time for some shooting say. Go for the top right here, see where we hit. Oh, there it is, okay. Oh, man, I had to screw it up. But uh, there's your five shot group. I got really nervous on the last one. But yeah, you guys, I could have got the fifth one through the hole if I was on my game. Right here, I adjusted the crosshairs to one side and obviously went too far. I'm not sure if I put a pellet in here or not. And then right here, I went a few clicks back and did one more group. 
The target camera actually died though, so scope cam only on this one. But we'll take a look at the groups in a second here. All right, T. Roo, let's try an official group. Damn it, that was me. Five shots, two holes. So here's that second group I shot, and center to center still fits under a dime. And then the first group I shot fits way under a dime. So great accuracy for 50 yards. This gun does not mess around. I went ahead and skipped the shot string on this one, mainly because I'm getting a little short on pellets, so I don't want to waste any. But we can tell the regular is working spot on because it's so accurate. And I will tell you that I didn't worry about filling my tank the whole time. I was shooting groups and it was hitting the exact same spot all the way down to the end of the tank. Amazing gun. But here's a trigger pull test. Comes in at under 11 ounces. So pretty nice. The bolt's a little bit hard to pull back, but this is a 25 caliber, so it's a powerful gun. And as well, here's a look at that trigger comes in at just 10.8 ounces. Definitely feels good. All right, you guys, that's it for me on this one. Definitely go check out the pellet shop. They sell tons of guns now. Air Force, the SK-19, the Leshy 2, as well as all the AEAs. You might want to grab a Donny FL LDC too, if you can, from the pellet shop, because they may be a little bit harder to get in the future. All right, everybody. I hope y'all have a good holidays. Till next week. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.